We've had remarkable success over the past 10 to 20 years in improving survival rates for our pediatric patients with cancers. There are certain diseases such as acute lymphoblastic leukemia and Wilms tumors and lymphomas where survival now exceeds 90%. There are, however, a subset of pediatric cancer patients that don't have these survival rates where outcomes are much poorer. And it's important we focus on those patients moving forward and identify new treatments that are effective for them so that they can also have a chance at cure. We know about 10% of our pediatric cancer patients are actually predisposed to developing cancer. And so it's very important that we identify those patients right away so that we can more closely monitor them and catch any cancer that's developing early rather than later. In addition to patients who have a predisposition to developing cancer, there's another component of understanding the genetics of cancer, and that's actually looking at the cancer cells themselves. What changes have they acquired that are causing them to be a cancer that's growing uncontrollably? And in order to do this, there have been a lot of advances of late in very high tech diagnostics so that we can map out exactly what took the cell from being a normal cell to being a cancer cell and causing the disease. And that's important because that will allow us to identify what's driving the cancer. And in doing so, we can start to understand which of our patients are cured with our current treatment and which patients need a new treatment or alternative treatment in order to have a chance at being a long-term survivor. Immunotherapy takes the patient's own immune system and modifies it such that it can now recognize the patient's cancer cells and eliminate those cancer cells. One of the most recent advances and the advance that's farthest along is called CAR-T therapy, where you take the immune cells from the patient, you modify those cells so that it can recognize and kill the patient's cancer cells, and then you reintroduce it back into the patient. This treatment was first piloted in acute lymphoblastic leukemia patients, and there were many patients who were deemed not curable, but in fact were able to achieve a remission with this remarkable treatment. And the treatment is now being applied to not just acute lymphoblastic leukemia, but other pediatric cancers, such as brain tumors, bone tumors, and neuroblastoma. So it's an important new therapeutic approach that's going to be used widely in pediatric cancer. And there's a lot of hope that this is actually going to improve our cancer survival rates overall in the next five to 10 years. In the next 10 to 20 years, I think we'll be using a combination of chemotherapy, immunotherapy, as well as the incorporation of new drugs that have, are currently being developed. Back in the 1950s, we didn't cure any children with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, but by incorporating multiple chemotherapy drugs, we were able to push cure rates all the way up to 90%. And now, as we incorporate immunotherapy and new drugs, we can push that cure rate even higher and extend it to not just our acute lymphoblastic leukemia patients, but all of our pediatric cancer patients. And I really think in the next 10 to 20 years, we can make dramatic improvements in our five-year survival for all of our kids with cancer. Contact us to learn more.